All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, again, my name is Blair Nickel, and we have Charlie McGee. Both of us are here with FranNet, and we're going to talk about side ventures, businesses to start while employed. I would say probably one of the top, um, call it trends, if you will, that we're seeing our clients do is, let's face it, unemployment's very, very low right now. Um, but we're seeing a lot of people who are kind of either tired of their jobs or have been and kind of want to ease out of their jobs over time. And so they're looking at this trend that's been going on for a few years, what we call semi-absentee or passively ran franchises or businesses. And so these are businesses that are designed for you to stay in your current job um, for as long as you want, but get the business up and running on the side. And we're kind of go through kind of the, the reasons why people do this. Uh, we're going to give you some sample, um, some examples of actual businesses, and then we'll tell you and kind of how to keep moving forward if this is something that you're interested in. Uh oh, hold on. Bear with me, guys. Try this again. There you there. go. We're back. All right, back in action. So yeah, we have about seven companies that we're going to talk about as, like I said, as well as next steps. Here's one thing that I would do. If you have your phone handy, and I'll bring up this QR code again um, at the end of the presentation. Like I mentioned, we are recording this presentation. And for us to be able to get that recording to you, snap a photo of this QR code and just let us know your name and email address. And we'll get a copy of this presentation as well as some of the other things that we would normally hand out in person uh, we'll get those to you as well. Um, so again, I'll give you just a, a minute to kind of take a picture of this QR code. And again, it will be available towards the latter part of this presentation. All right, moving on. Okay, so our typical client is usually someone who's about 40 to 55, maybe 40 to 60 years of age, has been in a cor uh, corporate path for many, many, many years, kind of always been in that but I've, I've always thought about wanting to own their own business. And they've always thought, gosh, how do I get a business up and running if I have a full-time job? Um, and these people are just inundated with information, but yet something is missing. And that something is missing is where do they start? You know, how do they find out about these businesses that you can do on the side? Well, that's what this webinar is all about. So ask yourself, what would make this session a success? What's possible is that you'll see these examples. It's not these examples are the ones that are right for you. This is just a small sampling of semi-absentee businesses that are designed for people who are, who are in corporate jobs or own other businesses. Um, but again, it's just to kind of give you a random sampling. So what we do, and most of you are probably familiar with Frandit and what Charlie and I do, but Charlie and I both help people go into business and franchise ownership. Our services are free to the general public. Uh, we are paid by the franchisors that are looking to grow here in the area. And our job is really kind of a matchmaker to help match you up with the right businesses or franchises based on who you are, what you're trying to achieve, your goals, your aspirations, income, you name it. Uh, we're kind of the matchmakers. And then we're going to be kind of your trusted coach to walk you through the research process so you can make a safe and wise decision at the end. Now, we fully acknowledge that business ownership is not for everyone. Okay. The unfortunate part about doing this is that it does take time. It does take money. There is risk involved, but Charlie's nice job is to help you kind of close that window of risk as much as possible so you can make a safe and wise decision. So typically our clients will look at multiple choices, um, multiple companies, so you're comparing and contrasting along the way. And the bottom line is that you need to feel safe about making this decision. Otherwise, you're not going to make it. You're not going to make the decision. So we've been doing this for decades. We have helped tens of thousands of people across the country um, go through this process and successfully into business ownership. Um, and so we have a very strategic approach and a very strategic research process to make sure you do this right. So like I said, starting a business is scary. Um, but again, it's, it's Charlie's and I's job to help you get through this. And we've done it many, many, many times. So what's realistic about today? What's realistic is to kind of just help you understand more about franchise investing opportunities and semi-passive ownership models. What's unrealistic today is that you will see the business that is right for you. Maybe you will, and I, and I hope you do. Um, but it, again, this is just a sample to kind of uh, help you learn a little bit more. And really it's designed for you to kind of log off here at the, at the bottom half of the hour saying to yourself, hey, is this something that I might have a little bit interest in 
to learn more about? If so, great. Now I know what my next steps are. Okay, so here we go. Businesses to start while employed. All right, Charlie, here's the first one. Okay, great. Can you hear me okay, Blair? Yes, absolutely. All right, awesome. Okay, well, good afternoon, everybody. So that's a good, Blair has teed it up perfectly. Uh, we've got seven ideas that we'll zip through pretty quickly. And the first one is called Decalash. And Decalash, it's interesting. Um, you know, when you look at franchises in general, the whole franchise or space, very few uh, franchises, 5% uh, of all franchises that are started uh, reach 100 open units. And uh, at FranNet, we focus, and there's thousands of franchises out there, and we tend to focus on the ones that really have the ability to do that. Deca Lash uh, got to 100 units and they did it in four years. So they're a founder driven franchise. Um, that has really been successful using technology to help drive the business. Um, what is Deca Lash? Um, it's, a, it's a beauty bar. It's uh, eyelash extensions and brows, um, two service lines that have been very popular in recent years and, and haven't slowed down a bit. Um, this Deca Lash is a thousand to 1500 square feet. Um, most franchise uh, investors are uh, investing in three units. Um, the uh, investment uh, item seven in the franchise disclosure document ranges from 215,000 for a four bed unit to 461,000 for a 10 bed unit. Um, the franchise fee for a three unit development deal is 105,900. Um, Deca Lash's ideal candidate. Um, first of all, you have to be financially uh, uh, qualified, $400,000 net worth, $100,000 uh, uh, liquid. Um, they're looking for people usually 36, 60 years old, uh, not limited to that, but that's kind of the sweet spot, couples, professionals, um, really people with great people skills, executives that have great people skills. It's a semi-passive model. Um, it's a membership model, which means uh, there's a high level of retention month to month of people that are receiving the services. And they've been super smart, as I mentioned, about using technology. Um, artificial intelligence for outbound marketing. They operate without a receptionist because they have a corporate call center that's highly sophisticated, takes all their inbound calls and makes outbound marketing calls to fill the books. They have a great smartphone app. It's a touchless uh, exit and entry and uh, just a lot of excitement around uh, Deca Lash. So that's where we'll start, Blair. Great. Thanks, Charlie. That one I, I actually kind of laugh at sometimes because I didn't get it at first just being a guy. Um, and then, you know, <laughs> it, it's really about eyelashes, right? And as you start walking around town, you see the number of people that actually do spend a hell of a lot of money on their eyelashes. It's amazing. Uh, we did have a quick question come in. Uh, what we mean by units is number of locations. So when Charlie said 100 units, that's 100, lo 100 locations. So hopefully that answers your question. Gosh darn it. Keeps pausing my share, Charlie. Sorry. No problem. All right. Next uh, franchise, Stretch Lab. This is one that I'm personally passionate about because uh, it's a franchise that both my wife and I have purchased as well. So um, Charlie and I not only talk the talk, but we walk the walk. Uh, we own businesses together. Um, I own other, other franchises. And, and I've personally been in franchising for about 25, 30 years. Um, but this is a franchise that, like I said, my wife and I have purchased together as well. Um, and trust me, when I first saw Stretch Lab across, come across my desk, I'm like, why would you want to pay money to go to a Stretch Lab? Can't we just stretch ourselves? Isn't that something we all do at the gym or at home or something like that? It is amazing what this franchise is going through. It's one of the top franchises that our clients have been purchasing um, across the board. And it falls within the boutique fitness uh, industry. Um, it's owned by a company called Exponential Fitness, which is one of the largest boutique fitness companies on the planet. Um, what's really nice about this business is that anybody is our customer. 
uh, we're able to help, you know, little Johnny who wants to be better at sports to somebody who has multiple sclerosis to somebody who's just, Hey, you know, they're older and they just want to tie their shoes and pick up their grandchildren to the golfer. Who's trying to have more flexibility to have a longer drive and be able to compete better to people that just want to be more flexible. Like it's one of those things that all of us say, Hey, it's good for us. We don't do enough of it and we need to do more. So this is one-on-one -on -one assisted professional stretching. Yes. You heard that correctly. Um, it, and it's, if I ever have a tough day at the office, I'll just go to our stretch lab location that we own and just to see the smile on people's faces is amazing. And if you haven't tried this out, please do. So again, this is a semi-absentee model. Um, the owners of these locations are people like me who own other businesses or have full-time jobs or just looking to diversify income or their investment portfolio. And so this is a storefront model and it's pretty affordable for a storefront model. It's usually about 200 to 250,000 according to the franchisor. Um, you can see the minimum financial requirements that the franchisor uh, requires of their franchisees. Uh, the vast majority of the franchisees like Decalash own multiple locations. They typically own three or more locations, which is always a very good sign to see that franchisees are happy enough though, so they're doing it more and more and more. And there's still plenty of room for growth across the country um, for this particular franchise. So again, great semi-absentee model. I um, highly suggest that you take a look at this one. Rubbish works. So I'll take this one as well. <laughs> look, when we were all in our homes, what, a couple years ago, um, God knows how much of us were kind of cleaning out our homes and getting rid of stuff and still are. <laughs> um, you know, to people that have, you know, deal with issues of hoarding or they're just trying to, you know, clean out their homes or businesses that are moving and got to get rid of stuff. That's what Rubbish Works does. And so when people come to us and say, hey, is there a semi absentee model, but more service related um, that's kind of has a green initiative behind it, kind of, you know, the trifecta of everything that people are looking for? Yeah, it's Rubbish Works. Um, as you can see, since it's service related, the investment range on this one is a lot less compared to a storefront model. So kind of call it 107,000 to about 150,000 according to the franchisor. And so therefore their financial requirements are less as well uh, for investors. This is a very easily scalable model because all it does is just grow by trucks and you usually have a driver uh, plus another person who man the trucks and they go out and they do the actual service. So the owner of these businesses are not the ones that are actually doing uh, the pickup and deliveries and the recycling, what have you. Um, they're the ones just making sure the customer service and the routes are going well. Um, and this is a service that most of us have used in our lifetimes. So um, just a, a great, very affordable, semi-absentee type of business. Uh, let me check the questions here real quick as we're going through. Um, Ted asks, what does the return on investment look like and how long to recoup our investment? Ted, that's an excellent question. Let me tackle that question because it's a question that everybody brings up and obviously wants to have answered um, as they go through this. So one part of our research process that we have our clients go through, Ted, and anybody else, uh, the others that are listening, is we're going to have you talk to the franchisees. So a lot of these franchisors will share with you the financials up front, um, but we're going to want you to get in contact with the franchisees, and Charlie and I will help assist you with this. Um, so that you can get those questions answered. So it's definitely one that has to be answered, um, but there's just a, a very methodical, um, foolproof way of doing it. Uh, Ron, you had a question in regards to Stretch Lab. What certifications are EEs required to have, physical therapists or personal trainers? So I think what you're asking for is not the franchisees, but um, they are called flexologists within those locations. They typically come from massage therapy, physical therapists, personal trainers, uh, yoga instructors, um, they go through the certification process that uh, Stretch Lab provides. It is a national certification to become a, a flexologist, um, and but they typically have those backgrounds. So hopefully that answers your question, Ron. All right, let's move on to, gosh, bear with me again. I don't know why it's doing this, Charlie. And there we go. Closed bin. Closed bin is another example of a very affordable, probably, I would say, Charlie, probably the most affordable uh, service related business um, and probably the most, call it semi absentee 
uh, type of business or passive owner. So think goodwill, who we've all used, donating clothes, uh, household materials, things like that. But think of it being more convenient. Um, so what Clothespin does is they come out and they help place the units for you, typically at churches, parking lots, schools, you name it. Um, and these are recycling bins in much more convenient locations uh, for clothes and textiles for people to recycle at. And um, it even has, believe it or not, a, a great amount of technology in the business where uh, there are sensors in those bins and so that the franchisee can see how full the bins are getting. This business only requires about one or two employees to go out there and service the bins and then either resell the clothes um, or recycle the clothes. Um, and they, the franchisees make their money off the reselling, purchasing and the reselling of the clothes, either back to the franchisor or to other establishments. Um, this franchise is, is very wide open. Um, it's a very up and coming business. Um, so this would attract somebody who says, hey, I want that green initiative. I want semi-absentee. I want service related. I want very little, uh, few employees, but very easily scalable. Okay, so that's what Clothesbin is all about. Uh, Redbox, Charlie. Okay, um, let's see, check the time. We're doing great. I think we're still on track for our 1230 finish. So yep. look at that thing, Redbox. What do you notice? Uh, you're right. It's a portable toilet and waste container in one. Uh, that's a proprietary uh, unit. Contractors are required by law to have both of those items on work sites. Um, and Redbox makes it easier uh, because it's gonna be one service, one phone call, uh, one invoice um, for a, a better setup and, and a greater convenience and savings. Um, here's who Redbox is looking for in franchisees. Uh, no construction experience necessary. Outgoing personalities, people that are connectors in their community. Uh, there's a lot of successful husband and wife teams. Um, you need a $500,000 net worth, uh, $150,000 liquid. Um, the investment uh, shows there, 516 to uh, 623. Um, and since it's a heavy uh, equipment investment, uh, there are some real tax advantages in terms of depreciation. I'm not an accountant. I'm not trying to give anybody uh, accounting advice. Uh, but it's an important feature of the business and something you could learn more about. Um, I like that 85% of the business uh, comes from repeat customers. So you don't have to be a super salesperson in order to thrive in this concept. You really just, like it says, needs to be outgoing and a, a relationship builder. You generally start with about 40 containers. Uh, the average franchisee has three or more territories, and a territory includes about 300,000 uh, people in population. Um, they've got 91 franchisees in 290 territories. Uh, so this has really been a fast-growing, successful franchise. And when FranNet did its validation on this concept, and of course, that's part of our process when we're determining what we're going to include in, a, in our curated inventory of concepts, um, we found, the, the validators found that every person they talked with was investing in additional territory. So if they started with one, they really, they wanted, and then we're in the process of, of acquiring more. And that's, you know, usually a good sign. So uh, Redbox, a good opportunity. Kicked us out again. It keeps kicking me out. That's all right. Everybody wants to see that big picture of you. Right? All right. Physical. Charlie. Okay. Yeah, I'll take this one too. Um, physical uh, therapy and balance centers. This is the largest physical therapy franchise uh, in the world. You can see in the investment range what it takes. Uh, they kind of measure their liquidity and net worth requirements based on whether you're doing one, two, or three uh, units. Um, there's today 442 open locations in 46 states. They have a little over 50 company stores. 
uh, which I like to see. I, I like when a franchisor uh, is operating uh, the businesses themselves. Um, I think it helps with innovation and consistency. Um, the um, most of the centers open for around three hundred and fifty thousand, but and that includes five months of uh, working capital. Um, in the early days, they were converting physical therapy and physical therapist owned centers um, into physical therapy and balance centers. Today, um, you, they're awarding franchises really to very few physical therapists. It's, it, it's business people, um, executives uh, that want to work in a professional environment with a small team. Uh, you can scale this business to uh, multiple units, uh, which designates it as a semi-absentee uh, option. Um, most of the work is injury and uh, surgery rehab. Um, I was in Boise last week helping my sister after her total knee replacement surgery, and we were in uh, a center. Um, you know, let's face it, we have an aging population. This is a demographically driven business. Um, when you think about, you know, hospitals, uh, discharging people as early as possible, um, immobility issues caused by obesity and diabetes. Of course, that's another reason that more people are going to go see Blair's stretch lab uh, facility in Bend, but that's also a driver for uh, physical. Um, they are, um, you know, this is true of a lot of businesses. The owners who perform the work that work in the business are usually pretty good at the service. They're usually not great at actually operating the business. And that creates the opportunity for uh, physical. I found it interesting that in 2021, Franchise Business Review, which is a, a widely uh, well-regarded uh, source of feedback on franchises, um, uh, physical was the most profitable uh, award or designation for FBR. So, um, and they have an area representative uh, option uh, for those who, you know, really are thinking bigger scale than three units. So uh, a lot of cool stuff happening at physical. Yep. That area rep is, is a very rare thing that we see in franchising and, and very sought after as well. I'll let everybody in one other secret. Um, a lot of people ask, hey, Blair, hey, Charlie, what's the number one franchise that your clients are purchasing nationwide? This is it. This was the number one franchise that our clients purchased. In other words, the most often pur purchased franchise um, by FranNet clients across the country last year. So, okay. This next one, Pep Bar. And this is our last one, and then we'll, then we'll wrap things up. Pet bars, I love this one. Um, I don't have my dog here in my office right now, but she's a 125 pound Bernese mountain dog. Um, she was just at the uh, groomer last week. And it, here's the deal about pets going to a groomer that you know does an okay job. They get stressed out, they really do. Um, and you know, the mom and pop is, God bless them, but you know, their, their locations do okay. Um, they're generally not that professional, not a very good image um, as far as, you know, the customers are associated, but these guys, Pet Bar does pet services. So if you have a love for pets, you like businesses that are associated with pets, but want to kind of up the bar for the um, pet grooming service within your area, Pet Bar is the call. It is also semi-absentee. Um, which is obviously the theme of this whole webinar today. Um, they do both self-service and full service, and they also have a membership model, which, um, you know, quite frankly, a lot of these franchises that Charlie and I have been talking about do have, which is great because it's, it allows you to forecast the income of the business month after month after month. Um, these have a very professional, very nice atmosphere to them. Um, they go in kind of, you know, higher end locations. They generally want pretty good demographics to go into. Um, this is a storefront model. Um, as you can see, the investment range is call it three hundred to about five hundred thousand um, dollars. We do see that most of the franchisees in this one as well do purchase multiple locations, which again, that's something you want to see in a franchise. Um, so just a very, very good franchise, um, especially if you have a love for pets in any shape or form. So that's Pet Bar. All right, Charlie, you want to talk about next steps? Absolutely. Um... So the, our entrepreneur profile 
is a proprietary assessment tool we've used for many years to help identify someone's entrepreneurial DNA. It takes 25 minutes or so, 20 minutes to complete. Um, even if you're not interested or you don't know if you're interested in really exploring franchise ownership, this is a useful exercise. Blair and I have gone through it uh, <laughs> a few times with people and I uh, guarantee you'll find, uh, you'll, you'll realize greater self-awareness about um, who you are and what your style is. So it is a tool that's very helpful for Charlie and I to help match you up with the right franchise based on who you are and what you're trying to achieve. So like we said, this was just a sampling of franchise that we gave you guys um, for semi-absentee, but there are others and this tool will help us match you up. Um, so the roadmap to success is another collateral that we've, um, clients have found super helpful when they're first kind of starting the journey of exploring business ownership, some things to keep in mind. And if you, if you didn't get a chance to um, hover your camera over the QR code at the beginning of the presentation, you'll have a chance to do that at the end. And one of the things that we'll send you is an electronic version of this, uh, uh, of this piece. Um, you know, the research process, uh, people that do the basics the best win the biggest. We're not trying to overcomplicate or add any unnecessary steps to the process. You just want to take these, you know, very seriously. So first, it's really assessment. That's the entrepreneur profile and building your ideal business model. You know, in a perfect world, what would that business look like? Today, we're talking about businesses to start on the side. And so if, in fact, that's what you're trying to do, you see yourself keeping a salary, keeping an income, continuing with your work. Um, and then starting something on the side. Sometimes people describe that as building a corporate off-ramp. Um, then the, the, we would only look at those concepts which would give you that ability. We'll uh, come up with a short list of ideas that you know, make sense as a good place to start, match you with those franchisors, um, start that process where they're real, the franchisors are really the ones providing the education. And we're, you know, we are there for you to make sure you're asking the right questions, getting your questions answered, uh, kind of guiding you through that validation process of talking to other franchisees, ultimately just making a good, confident decision, uh, whether that's to move forward or not. Um, Blair and I, you know, we love this work of working with clients. Here's that QR code. Just hover your phone over that spot um, and we will uh, get you the information that you need. It's going to come up as Blair's contact information, but, you know, if you're, he and I will sort that out. If you're in Washington, um, you know, you'll hear from me and, um, and likewise. So anyway, we, uh, we really look forward to it. If you want to have a conversation with us, uh, just about your own personal circumstances or situation. And, um, you know, there's our email and phone numbers. Um, we, we're both absolutely uh, open uh, to having those conversations and look forward to it. So, uh, Blair, great to be with you today. Thank you, Charlie. Appreciate it. We want to thank everybody for attending. We hope you, you found that uh, um, informative and helpful to kind of learn about semi-absentee businesses and that, hey, it really is doable to own businesses while you have a full-time job um, for whatever reason that you want to do it. So again, thank you everybody for attending. Uh, feel free to use that QR code here in the last minute, and we will get that information off to you um, once you uh, provide your name and, and uh, email address. So again, everybody have a great afternoon. Thank you again, Charlie. And we'll talk to everybody soon. Terrific. Thanks.